100 years before the modern electric motor, Benjamin Franklin revealed the electrostatic motor. It works on the principle of attraction and repulsion between charged surfaces. Lighting jars would alternate between positive and negative charges, and this would rotate the thimble capacitors. However, the RPM was very low, and the torque was minimal. It never took off, so to speak, and it was quickly sidelined by the magnetic motor by Michael Faraday in 1821. However, the electrostatic motor still has several advantages over the modern magnetic motor. It does not need heavy magnets, complex coils, or steel laminations. And the simplicity of the electrostatic motor gives it an advantage when it comes down to a microscopic level. The potential of the electrostatic motor was not realized until the mid-20th century, and it quickly became prominent in MEMS devices, which combine mechanical and electrical components on a single chip. These types of MEMS devices have endless applications, including accelerometers, gyroscopes, and even hard drives. And it had a very big influence on computing. As a matter of fact, you are probably using some sort of electrostatic actuation in a device you're using today. So it is true that Mr. Franklin did discover something very profound. However, it wasn't until recently that electrostatic motors have been employed into larger applications. One pretty significant development that happened recently is the Coulomb Phi. The drone is 4 grams, or the same weight as an A4 sheet of paper. At the core of this machine is an electrostatic motor. Its rotors are made of fiber and aluminum foil. These blades spin between electrodes arranged in the ring. When a high voltage is applied, the blades are pushed around by the electric field. A lightweight solar panel outputs at 4 volts, and a converter ramps this up to over a power level of 9000. However, instead of firing key blasts, this drone can fly indefinitely. Or pretty much as long as there is a light source. This transcended to a smaller variant that only spanned a few millimeters. However, like many microaerial vehicles, they lack stability, and there has to be additional components to implement thrust vectoring for control. Another version of this, which many consider to be the solid state version, is the electrohydrodynamic thruster. Instead of opposite polarities in the rotor and stator, this particular setup utilizes an electric field to generate a plasma of ionized air. The ions are drawn towards a negatively charged grid, and these collide into neutral air molecules and impart momentum. Even though this design was tethered at the time, it might be possible to build a self-sustainable power source like the Coulomb Fly. Another inventor which I highly recommend and I've covered before is Ethan Cross. He has built larger self-sustainable ion craft, which can be controlled and fly for several minutes, which is a pretty impressive feat for something out of somebody's garage. But the question still remains, can the electrostatic design be scaled up and be more of a universal fit for vehicles? Well, that's an intriguing question because C-Motive has revealed a game-changing half-horsepower motor. Once again, it has no magnets, coils, or laminations, and it tops out at around 360 watts, which makes it one of the most powerful electrostatic motors of its kind. The key to this machine is that it utilizes a dielectric fluid instead of air. A dielectric has the property of transmitting electric force without conduction. So it's an insulator and it prevents the machine from arcing over. I kind of think of it as holding two magnets close together. And you want that force, but you don't want them touching together. And that's pretty much what the dielectric is doing. Another really good way you can look at how a dielectric fluid is effective is in a wire EDM machine. These types of machines use an electrode to cut material. And typically you can use deionized water, which is a common dielectric fluid, but you can also get into oil-based dielectrics, which allow the machine to even be more accurate since there is a smaller spark gap. And with an oil-based dielectric, you can cut up to 20 micrometers, which is pretty insane. We also want a very similar effect in the electrostatic motor because now you can have a very sophisticated array of very high voltage electrodes that do not spark over. And this sweat is basically the key of the electrostatic machine. The thing to keep in mind about any electrostatic motor is that it's primarily focused on high voltage and not so much amperage. However, this dielectric fluid needs very strict parameters because it needs to be a good insulator, a relatively good permittivity, along with having low viscosity so that the rotor can rotate without too much friction. What makes this all interesting is that theoretically there could be high dielectric constants with low viscosities on the table. Computational engineering may find that set of dielectrics that exhibit high thermal stability with those constants. 
Not to mention that there could be some very complex electrical geometries. So the C motive motor is maybe not a universal fit for everything because it just doesn't have that power density of a high strength magnetic field motor. But the thing is, is that it has relatively high torque at low speed, which might make it good for industrial fans or even high energy pumps. Despite all this, the electrostatic motor in a different variation can be utilized in lightweight craft. And that is really interesting because you can have very long flying drones. And maybe one day we can improve the electrostatic design for stability. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.